came from Crystal Bella nearly two weeks ago now I had a surgical laparoscopy which is a keyhole surgery to uh, basically look at your abdomen and in that surgery I was diagnosed with endometriosis. To put into perspective of how massively underfunded endometriosis research is, um, anyone who is born with a uterus um, has a 1 in 10 chance of um, growing endometriosis. That's 10% of the population. For diabetes, 1 in 16 people are likely to be diagnosed with diabetes. And when you think about it, there is a lot of funding for diabetes. So it does not make any sense at all um, because endometriosis is a lifelong um, condition, especially when you think about how endometriosis can really affect someone's life and massively affect their quality of life as well. So the research available and information on this is very limited um, and I'm going to talk about some of the theories with it because again it is just theories, nothing has been proved to say what causes endometriosis, there is no definite this is what causes it, there is no cure, there's only treatments and even some of the treatments that I'm going to mention there is no proof as to whether or not these actually help improve um, the growth of endometriosis. So please bear that in mind, especially as well when you're doing other research. If you follow me on other social medias, um, you'll know that this is something that I've been struggling with for a very, very long time. Um, and for many years, I didn't have any answers, but I do now have those. So first of all, what is endometriosis? My poor phone has got so many different papers downloaded onto it of research that has been done on endometriosis. I have done so much reading in my recovery time. I'm now on week two, my poor phone is full up. So I've done as much research as I can for this. There are some theories um, about where the endometrium comes from. But first of all, let's talk about what it is. So. Inside your womb is a material which the egg would attach to and that's what helps um, with the growth of a baby. Um, and every month that material sheds and exits as it would do, which is where you have your period. Um, a material that is almost identical starts growing in other areas of the body, most commonly the pelvic area, so it can attach itself to your fallopian tubes, your womb, bowels, kidneys, gallbladder, diaphragm, bladder. Um, it's even been found on hips, spine, brain. Um, even though endometriosis is um, mostly diagnosed in women or people who are born with a womb, this isn't necessarily something that only happens to those people, um, even people who don't have wombs, um, so say so someone who's had a hysterectomy, for example, they can still get endometriosis, um, which is why a hysterectomy isn't always, it isn't, isn't a solution at all, um, not the cure for endometriosis, but also um, it has been diagnosed in some cis men, um, it's it is incredibly rare and i think there's only a couple um of instances that it has been recorded but it has been found in men and i think as well unless you know to look for it because endometriosis can't be found uh, or at least isn't always present almost always isn't present in things like ct scans and mri scans for example i've i've had uh three or five mris in the last two years i've had several ct scans and other scans doesn't show up on that and unless you open up certain areas you're not going to find it so but yeah very rare cases and very unlikely to happen but endometriosis can be found in men people who don't have wombs um people who have had their wombs removed um it is the mystery of all mysteries um so more awareness and more funding please and there are theories which almost disprove themselves instantly and also kind of don't, so it's really hard to say. So one of the first theories was that 
and um, sometimes when a period happens it goes back on itself and up through the tubes and the idea is that it breaks through the walls and then starts growing however this has been disproved because that's not how the body works um it's it's not possible for that material to to do that for me it's growing around my fallopian tubes both tubes and it's also growing quite heavily on my bowels unfortunately they weren't able to touch my bowels because they need a specialist there and with covid they're very limited on their resources and people that they have available so i will have to come back to that at a later date and very much like the material that's inside your womb every month it sheds but obviously it's got nowhere to go so it kind of pulls up around your other organs which causes inflammation and lots of pain so some people with endometriosis will experience excruciating pain during times of their period but they will get it at any time in their so cycle it's not specific to that um they'll get pain just general abdominal pain pain when passing urine pain when passing stools pain during sex pain whenever the most amount of pain I get is when I laugh, cough and sneeze um, because it tenses up those muscles and they react and it's very painful um, and because I have it quite heavily on my bowels as well I get a lot of pain with my digestive system and things like that so that's where mine comes from. I have been dealing with these issues since a very young age. I, I, I can't even say when it's been going on that long. And unfortunately, women's health is not taken very seriously. Um, and when a woman or someone says that they're having abdominal pains and there's someone with a womb, they're told, oh, it's just period pain, it's normal, it's anxiety, it's, you know, you're worrying too much. It, it's very, it gets shrugged off very easily and I say this with confidence because I've met many, many women with endometriosis and they have all said the same thing. Um, we all get shrugged off with the whole, it's normal, it's just anxiety. Um, if you're in so much pain that it's stopping you from doing what should be normal, that's not normal. Is there a cure for endometriosis? Unfortunately, there is not, there's not even enough research to prove that the solutions that are offered um, to women and people with wombs, that it's even particularly effective. There are some research studies that show it can make it worse. So you really just have to hope that whatever solution you are provided with, that it will be helpful for you. Um, but you really have to do your own research. You, you, your doctors are going to heavily rely on you doing your own research. You know your body better than anyone and so doing your own research is massively important because a lot of doctors and gynaecologists very much do the whole one shoe fits all thing, which is not true by any means. There are certain hormones that really don't agree with people and offering the same hormone to everyone is very irresponsible. One of the solutions that many doctors like to offer on the table is have a baby. The reason they say that is because obviously when someone has a baby, um, periods and stuff stop, which means the endometrium doesn't regrow back and shed for at least nine months. So that's a great, you know, short term solution. But that does mean that there is a baby at the end of it. And it is incredibly irresponsible to say to someone to have a baby to help with their symptoms because your symptoms are going to resume almost instantly straight after and for some people it makes it incredibly worse because you know that tissue's been sat dormant for a long time and suddenly it's kick-started and it and but there is a baby at the end of that as well like it just think about it a, a, a person who is having the most unbearable pain that they, they can't get out of bed they can't even stand up straight they can't do anything and they're told that a solution is having a baby that person is desperate so that person has a baby but they don't know how to care for a baby they don't have the mental capacity to care for a baby and once their endometriosis resumes they're not physically able to care for a baby and the next thing you know there's a baby that's not being cared for not because the mother is a bad parent by any means but because they were irresponsibly told that having a baby is a solution and now there is this baby and that's 
you know, foster care and things like that and kids being abused and mothers being left with nothing, no help and support because a doctor said, have a baby and you'll feel better. Having a baby is not the solution. Um, I can't stress how oh, how riled up that makes me feel. Um, and I'm sure many other people watching this who have heard this shares my angst in that. It's... I... Why would you say that to someone? But there you go. Um, hormone therapy um, in the form of contraceptive pills, injections, implants, uh, including the marina coil, are suggested. More often than not, a doctor or gynaecologist will go straight to saying the marina coil. For some people, this is a godsend, but for people with endometriosis, it can cause more problems than not. Because there is inflammation and scar tissues in those areas, there are a lot of potential complications. Again, for some people, it's been the best thing, but I have seen so many more people say that it's not a good thing. Um, and the outcome can be devastating. And I have a lot of people telling me that I should just try it. And if it doesn't work, then I can just get it removed. It's not as easy as that because the results can be so devastating um, that you could end up, you know, losing part of your reproductive system because it got dislodged. And that could happen within, that could happen on the day of it being put in. So telling someone to just try it, you know, that, that doesn't really work that way. But also because doing the whole, well, it can just be removed. Some people are forced to wait three months, six months, nine months, and sometimes a year. They can be in agonising pain and still be forced to wait until someone removes it. It's not something that you can just remove yourself. Some women will have definitely tried and may have been successful, but that is such a dangerous thing to do. And the fact that women are forced to have a foreign body in their object because someone said, just give it a couple of months, it'll settle. Apparently, someone who knows their body better than someone who's only met them once or twice, apparently they have no say over their own body and it is awful how those people are treated. It's mental. But... That is just, you know, my experience and understanding of the coil. As I've said, there are some people where it is literally the next best thing. It stops their period. They don't have to worry about anything for five years or three years, depending on which one you have. Their pain is completely gone. You know, they, they can go around and doing things exactly as they could do before. But you should also be aware that it's not the only option that you have. You have the injections, you have other contraceptive pills. It is not the only option, so if you are worried about that, you do have other options. And I say that with emphasis because when I came out of my surgery, the gynaecologist came round to me and I, I'd already done my research on it, so I, I knew before going in that what he said was wrong, but he said to me, um, you know, we, we, we found the endometriosis, um, the only um, real kind of treatment that we can do is hysterectomy, but you haven't, you know, decided on your family yet. Um, would be to put you into early menopausal, to have a baby, um, or the marina coil. And I said, well, surely I have more options than that available. And he said, well, it's either that or we can't treat your bowels. So he literally said to me, unless I choose the coil, they're not going to continue treating me for something that is still very much affecting me. I've spoken to other health professionals since and they have agreed that he was absolutely wrong for what he said. So I have people telling me, you know, b believe and trust what they're saying because they're more educated than you. That's not always true. <laughs> Sometimes people say things that are not true and they will withhold information from you so that you can make the decision that they want you to make. It, it is always your decision. You always have a choice. Um, do your research. If you ever think someone said something and you, something in you just kind of goes, that just doesn't seem right, don't be afraid to offend them by questioning it. It's your health. I've seen people who, before they've even been officially diagnosed with endometriosis, they've been told they have to have a hysterectomy to then find out that they never had endometriosis and now their reproductive organs have gone when they, could, they shouldn't have done so. 
do your research, hold your ground, you know your body better than they do. Okay, they understand they, you know, their anatomy and understanding of conditions is much better, but they don't know your body, they don't understand the pain that you're in. So don't be afraid to tell them. Um, because otherwise you could end up in a situation where, you know, you, you you've agreed and done everything that they've said they've done that they're going to do and it's gonna help you and it might you know just always be so careful on what people say to you because some people are too proud to admit when they don't know something and they will offer solutions which are not good for you and it's devastating to find out that someone advised you wrongly for example um my laparoscopy i only had one because my gynecologist wanted to prove to me that they weren't going to find anything um, they were adamant that there was absolutely nothing wrong with me. It was just anxiety and it was just stress and there was absolutely nothing there. And, you know, if there was something causing my pain, it was absolutely not gynecologically related. It must be something else. Even though I've had MRIs, I've, I've had CT scans, I've had blood tests, I've had stool tests, I've had every single test under the sun. Um, but they were adamant that they were right and... When I came out of surgery and the, that different, um, the gynecologist said to me that they found it, if it weren't for the fact that I was high on tramadol, I would have cried my eyes out because there was so much relief over finally, finally being diagnosed with something and finally doctors cannot anymore tell me that my pain is anxiety and that I'm making it up in my head because I'm so sick of people doing that. And I'm sure that I am not the only one, and I know I'm not the only one because I've spoken to so many people where that has been the case. And it's such a relief, but that's the thing. If, I, if I'd if i have listened to those doctors, to those gynecologists, they, they tried talking me out of having the surgery because they were like, well, we'll offer this, but we're not going to find anything. So it's up to you if we go ahead. Um, so I basically had to choose to have a surgery where potentially nothing was going to be found. And I was so nervous and I was so scared about the whole thing, but I'm so glad I went ahead. And, you know, again, I keep people keep telling me, you have to trust what they say and, you know, that they're the experts, you're not. But I knew my body, I knew something was wrong and I was right. So don't ever feel like just because a doctor has told you nothing is wrong, it does not mean that's the case. Put your foot down i only got diagnosed by chance because i was seeing the gynecologist for a separate reason and they'd treated me for that reason and i was still having problems and i kept pushing and kept pushing and it's been over 10 years so very recently that happened and it was by absolute chance to the point where i'd annoyed them so much that they went do you know what we'll put you for this but you're not gonna find anything I knew my body and I knew that I was right. I knew that something wasn't right. And they were wrong and I was right, haha. <laughs> I'm going to link in the description um, one video that I found was really, really useful. Um, there are so many videos on YouTube, um, by the way, that have a lot of information that isn't correct, but it's said by doctors. Um, and some of them are said by doctors who have no relation to gynaecology at all. So if you come across those, just know instantly, unless it's a gynaecologist talking about it. But even this one gynaecologist video was like, here is a cure. There is no cure. Um, but this one video was particularly good. Do, doing your research is so important, but you have to be so careful just because they have doctor in their name. They could be a doctor of anything. They could be a doctor of light bulbs or something. Like you have to be so careful with the information that you find um do do your own research do like i've read so much that yeah what a ride it has been thank you so much for all of your support as always don't forget to subscribe and click the little notification bell so that you know when my next video is up um and i will see you next time bye 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 um